Greetings ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Mastering the Minecraft Replay Mod Tutorials. My name is Sliced Lime, I am your host and we have gone through quite a bunch of stuff up until this point. We have learned how to make great paths, how to smooth them out. Then we've also learned how to reuse timelines and to mix up the footage from different ones. We have learned how to move timelines in time and re-render the same ones, reusing the results that way. We have learned how to move timelines between replay files and we have learned how to move a timeline between different locations in the world. And we're going to put all of those techniques to good use today because today we're going to make something that I promised you before, something similar to my glass core seamless portal transition into the nether. We're going to make a TARDIS. This is our TARDIS. Now, if you don't know what a TARDIS is, it's a vessel looks like a police box, small sort of booth on the outside, but on the inside it is much, much bigger. Now obviously that is impossible and this looks nothing like it. But let's switch on a resource pack. This is a pack I've modified based on a pack called The Doctor 32 TARDIS 2.0. I'll put a link to the project page for that in the video description. Anyway, now this looks a lot more like a TARDIS. See police box and stuff. So. Here we have a TARDIS. Good stuff. We have basically recorded a replay for this now. I've been staring at it for a while, so we might as well just save and quit and go into our replay viewer. And we see that we have a TARDIS exterior. That's my world that I built this in. All right, so now we're in our replay. We can pause that. And we are going to go into the character screen and we're just going to make me invisible. I not the interesting part of this, the interesting part is our TARDIS. And we're not going to have any player interaction in this one that we'll be adding in into the next one. So we have our police box here and basically it's on the top of a mountain. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to come in from afar. So we are going to start maybe down here and we're going to zoom our way up all the way up to sort of get a close view of it. Spin maybe three quarters of a rotation around it to have an open door. This one in specific. And we'll just be going through that one. Let's start laying that out and we'll go through the details later. So we wanted to start maybe down here. We're going to set some start keyframes. Uh, zoom in on our timeline here and I'm probably just going to skip most of this in the video because you've seen it a bunch of times now and you know how to do it. All right, so we have a path. Let me show it to you. We are going to notice some issues here. For instance, we start with a quite large counter rotation issue. We're going to do exactly what we've done before to solve that. That is, we are going to render that first piece with a linear interpolation. And then we're just going straight through the doorway with nothing behind it, of course, because that's where we're going. So now I'm going to save this timeline. And we're going to call it TARDIS. Because it doesn't really matter what you call it. All we need is one timeline for this shot. We don't really know where to go from here on. We're going through the door here, but we don't exactly know where the door is in the interior because the interior is in an entirely different world. So there's really nothing more we can do here. Now we have to go to a different world. And here we are in that world. This is a world made by Minecraft Fezzes. You can get it on Planet Minecraft. I'll leave a link to that project in the video description as well. Uh, it's not supposed to look exactly like this. We need yet another resource pack. Yeah, so we can get rid of the other one and we can add in this one. And they are out of date, but that's fine. They work anyway. And there we go. Now it looks a little bit different, but it's still the same world. And this is the one that we're going to be going into. So yes, the interior is going to have a different resource pack than the exterior. And that's going to be perfectly fine. It will all match up perfectly well anyway. Now, in order to get the timeline into this world, we're going to have to know where to place it. And where to place it, it's going to be right in the doorway. We The doorway is what we are going to be syncing up the worlds with, right? So this block 
is the first block of our little walkway here. It's the first interior block, let's just say. So we'll use this block as our sort of anchor block. This is the one that we want to go to. And if you check the looking at figures there, that's 474, 21 and 872. So let's save a screenshot of that just so we can quickly look it up later. And again, this should be plenty of a time for our replay to have solidified and we can use it. Now, before we move on, let's just for a quick second head back into our exterior world and take a look at this thing. It doesn't really matter that the resource pack is wrong. We're just looking for the block coordinates. So we were looking at a block in the other one. That was actually the floor block, but this block will do. We're just going to reduce the Y coordinate by one to get the floor block below this block I'm looking at. This one is 216, 119 and 161. So we'll be going for block 216, 118 and 161. Let's save a screenshot of that too and then head on back out. Okay, so now we are heading over to my site to my replay mover tool. Of course, because we need to move this timeline and what we're going to use as old reference coordinates are the floor coordinates in our world where we have set our timeline that is in the exterior world. And those coordinates were 216, 118 and 161. And then the new reference coordinates are going to be in the, the new world, 474, 21 and 872. Submit that. Save the file and then replace the one inside of our new timeline with that one. Okay, so now we're in the second replay in the interior map and we can open the keyframe repository here and we see that we have a TARDIS timeline that we can load up. And I'm also going to get rid of myself because I'm not going to be in the shot. And we can see that we have the timeline coming in here uh, and entering the interior. So here's what we want to sort of continue our little flight and yeah, have a nice little look at the environment here. I'm not going to make a massive fancy timeline going through all of this. It's a really nice map, but I'm not doing this to showcase the map. I'm doing this to showcase the technique, even though I'm hoping the end result is going to be a decent showcase of the map. That looks pretty good to me. So now we have our path we're going to overwrite TARDIS with that. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to do the process in reverse. We're going to take this timeline that I've now overwritten, move it back to the space of the other exterior shot and then put it back in the replay file of that exterior shot. All right, now we're back in our exterior replay shot. We can pause that, bring up the keyframe repository and load our TARDIS sequence. And we can see that it now goes in here and then continues to sort of spin around here. So we are pretty much now at the point where we are ready to start rendering this. So let's go into mod option, replay mode and switch on linear path interpolation and we get linear pieces of path. And we're going to, let's see, switch me off because I should not be in the shot. And we're going to render this. Now that we have our first render, we're going to switch it back on to cubic path interpolation and render a second time. And that gets us a smooth, nice curve showing the exterior, but we still don't have any good way of getting inside. This door is sort of in the way. So we're going to have to go back into our actual game world and record a new replay that we can use for that. Okay, so we are back inside of our exterior world and what we need to do is open this door to another world in the replay file. And the way we do that is with these things. They are green screen blocks and they are simply modified versions of these blocks from the resource packs that I've removed some elements and I've replaced the texture of the rest with green, pure green. So let's place these down and you'll see exactly how that works. Now, this might seem like a very special case. I have a special resource pack just to be able to do this in this special case. And the next time in the final installment in the series, we'll be talking about the generic case where you just want to do a portal transition or something else with the normal Minecraft blocks. So don't worry if you don't have a specific resource pack, we'll get to that. Anyway, as you can see, this is just a sort of opened up doorway with just green inside of it. So, of course, 
Now, if we move the replay into this file as well, we can re-render the path showing this instead. Also note that it's green on this side as well, so that's why we want the first little segment to be showing the previous version of this box. And then once we get here, we really want to show the green screen version, and then of course we're going to use green screen technique in our post-processing to replace the green screen with the interior. Now, one thing I will note is that this is now daytime. And the previous one was not a daytime. So I think what we're going to do is game rule do daylight cycle false and time set to something. So let's try out, see if we can find a good value. That might be good. And I'm actually going to do this render and then I'm going to redo the other renders in the same time so that we get fully matching replays. Anyway, we're going to, first of all, let this time be for a while so we get a little bit of time here at the end of this replay. And then we're going to do all of those three renders. And as a quick recap, we are in Sony Vegas, which is my video editing software. We're just going to go through what we have this far and see that we can stitch these together. I have the three clips here and I have them stacked on top of each other. So we can see when the switch over happens. It's going to be here somewhere this frame and we can split this top and remove that clip that's the first split that we're going to do and then it doesn't actually matter so much but before we come back around here we want to split away the second time so that we end up with the open door once we swing around Okay, so with that done, I have now again uh, translocated the timelines into this interior replay and we're going to load up TARDIS 1 here and now we can finally <laughs> take a look at what is going on in this one and it's going to be weird. Oh yes, it's going to be very weird and that is perfectly fine because all that needs to sync up here is the last little piece. However, we're going to run into a bit of trouble that we're going to address, but let's first at least do a render of this so I can show you what those problems are going to be when we composite all of this on top of each other. So let's just do a render of this straight off. All right, and with that, we are back in our editor and you can see that I've added the clip of the interior render underneath the exterior render. So it's not visible anywhere right now. Uh, but if we were to decrease the opacity of this we can sort of see through it we can see that it is kind of clearly matching the motion of the exterior shot so we have something good here at least now what we need to do is simply to get the green screen to be transparent and the way we do that is by using a standard green screen effect so because sony vegas Chroma key is a little bit flawed. I've had to do a little bit of a work around here, so that's why there are more tracks now. But basically what I've done is set up a green screen effect. So you can see as we approach here, nothing seems to happen, but we now have something else in the doorway and you can see that it kind of matches up and we enter, but there are several problems. This is one of them and it's very simple to deal with. So as we come in through the door, we actually go through the block and we end up seeing this. Well, that's no problem at all because we can simply remove the rest of this clip. Once we're inside, fully inside of the TARDIS, we don't really need them. So then instead we'll get this where we come into the TARDIS and then we just keep being in there. So that's fine. The other problem is this, and that's what I was mentioning before. So as we come around here, we're quite far away and here looks pretty decent, but there's a block in the way. So here the entire thing goes entirely white or gray. So if we take a look at this channel here with our interior shot, we'll see that what happened was we passed into some bit of redstone wiring that's actually outside an airspace. And that's why we can't see the entrance right there. So what we want to do is make sure that basically that this segment is free of such issues. Now you can do that by covering up all of this or you can do that by removing all of the blocks that doesn't really matter but what is clear is we'll need to redo this replay and we'll need to re-render the timeline so let's head back into the game 
So once again, we are back in after clearing out some more blocks. And what you can see is I have sort of removed, cleared away blocks in front of this doorway. But there appears to be one more block in the way. This blue block has to go. And this is how we're working <laughs> at it. We're just getting rid of blocks until the doorway is clear. Actually, the doorway is two blocks tall, so that might not be necessary. All right, back in Sony Vegas, we're just going to replace this uh, this interior clip with a new one we rendered, which is this one. And now we're going to make sure that we don't have anything in the way. So look closely at the doorway, and there should be nothing flashing by this time. And if we take a look at this clip solo, you'll see what has actually happened is here I've sort of cut up a piece of the wall and exposed the doorway and it's all kind of broken now but that doesn't matter because once you're in here you won't see that and if we needed to see that we'd have to use another recording so at here we're starting to see the damage done so that's where we'll have to end our clip so we can probably end it at that frame and just fade it out and we'll still get a nice transition and if you did want to do the full circle in, in the interior, then you could do that. You just have to combine yet another clip with the same timeline, and that time you'd have to also match it up with the light, the timing of the light on the wall. So that gives us our final transition, seamless transition into a TARDIS from the outside and seeing some of the massive interior after flying around it on the outside, seeing that it's not actually that big on the outside. Mm -hmm. Now, there are a number of caveats here, especially in this last part where you will see the damaged parts and such. And if you really wanted to extend this all the way to the end, you'd actually need another shot. You'd need a green screen shot of the exit, and then you'd need an exterior shot without the TARDIS, so that you would get the background and you're looking out. Because if I extend this clip here again, and we take a look near the end, you will notice that you can actually see out through the door. So there are a large number of complications, and you can basically make these shots as complex as you want, and there's always more complications to add. And that is basically what we'll be doing next time in our final entry into the series. We will be doing the portal shot from Glass Core, where we go seamlessly from the overworld into the end, However, we'll be doing it even worse. So the things that we'll be adding is we'll be seeing through the portal in both ways, but only one way it'll be a portal, the other way it'll be actually be a portal texture. And then we'll also have, exactly as we did in Glass Core, a player in the picture jumping through the portal. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this one, and I hope you get sort of a grasp of how green screen techniques can be used together with the replay mod to create some pretty amazing effects. As always, I'll try to answer any questions you have in the comments. My name is Sliced Lime, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.